how much are you expecting this drug to increase demand or how much demand for this drug are you expecting to be increased in the next five to ten years? Well, we expect this will be a, a very, very significant part of our business. We are just getting going on obesity. We know there are many more people living with obesity than there are people living with diabetes. And it's basically a, a complete new market. We are now launching Wigovi uh, again in the US. We have launched uh, in Denmark and Norway, and we look to gradually uh, roll out in more countries uh, during this, this year. So a very, very significant opportunity for, for no Nordisk. When are you expecting to start selling Wigovi in the UK? Well, I cannot disclose that. Um, UK is one of the countries we, we are looking at. Uh, UK is also one of the countries where there's the biggest uh, population of people living with obesity, so it's an obvious market for us to focus on. And uh, we all know that obesity is a leading cause of, of other diseases like type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, some cancers. So it's really important not only for the individual, uh, but also for the health resilience and uh, also for, for our healthcare systems that are increasingly struggling in coping with, uh, with the diseases that follows uh, an aging population. Yeah. Uh, but Lars, I understand that you've delayed the introduction of, of, of this drug in Europe because you want to make sure that there was enough, um, you know, of the supply chain bottlenecks being dealt with in the U.S. Is that still the case? How do you see the rollout going? We have now uh, replenished our inventories. We have manufacturing running. We have all doses available in the U.S. Uh, from the end of, of 2022. So we're now back in the market, and we see a very strong uptake. We see that the number of new scripts are now already a couple of weeks in, higher than uh, what we have seen uh, any time uh, before. So it's a very uh, strong and very encouraging uh, signal of, uh, of the launch, and we will have additional uh, manufacturing lines uh, coming uh, online during this year. Yeah. So we believe we have robust supply. Is the U.S. still a, a more attractive market to launch drugs because they don't have so much price regulations? Well, in the U.S., you get relative quick approval by the FDA compared to Europe. That takes longer time. And then in the U.S., you can secure market access by negotiating with the pharmacy benefit managers relative fast compared to Europe, where you have to go country by country and gain access. So in that sense, U.S. is a more attractive market. Uh, you can get earlier to market. And there is a more of a pull nature from, uh, say, commercial insurance compared to Europe, uh, where it's a slower uh, process. Nevertheless, we are also rolling out uh, in Europe, and we see the same health benefits from our medicines in Europe. And we also see the same uh, pull demand from patients living with uh, obesity in Europe. So we are equally excited about it, but it takes a bit longer time because of the way the market is structured. And how well are things going in the U.S. to get health insurers to cover some of these new obesity drugs? It's going very well. All the large uh, pharmacy benefit managers has adopted it on formulary. And in the U.S., uh, employers have to opt in. Uh, so we actually see now that we have an addressable market that's uh, similar to the market uh, we have in diabetes. Uh, in the U.S., 109 million Americans live with a BMI above 30. So it's a very, very uh, sizable market. And we already now have an addressable market that's similar to what we have in diabetes. So it's... Uh, it's a, it's, it's a significant opportunity, and, and we are ready to go and uh, you know, take our share of that market. Uh, what about Europe? Are European governments being too difficult with reimbursements or are too stingy on drug prices? So it's interesting to note that the first two markets we've lost in, in, uh, launched in, in Denmark and in Norway, it's actually out of pocket pay, so there's no, not yet reimbursement. Yet we see a very strong uptake, stronger than what we have typically seen when we launched a diabetes product. So this, this tells about uh, the struggles people with obesity have been living with for long, tried many different types of interventions, uh, often not succeeding. So when mm -hmm. there is a medicine available, there's actually willingness to pay out of pocket. In parallel, we're building the case with uh, the healthcare systems uh, for government yep. uh, reimbursement. And uh, we also make some progress there, but it takes, it takes time in Europe because you have to negotiate country by country.